Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to show you how to make an easy shore lunch in the Dutch oven. So y'all stay tuned. So uh, today I'm going to show you how to make an easy shore lunch anywhere you are, uh, when you're fishing, when you're camping. Um, we actually done this right on the beach. Uh, I'll leave you a, a little card right up here you can click on. Go back and show you cooking some uh, redfish with this exact same dish right on the beach. Uh, that's an older video so we're going to redo it for you guys for the people that are just beginning and all you new subscribers. And uh, we appreciate every one of y'all that came on board. So we're continuing with this uh, series that we're trying to put up on Tuesdays of uh, easy easy Dutch oven dishes uh, that you can make anywhere. So let me show you the few ingredients that you need to make this dish. I usually carry them right in the Dutch oven. So there's our Yukon Gold potatoes. You're going to need about four or five of those. You need a nice uh, lime, some uh, panko style breadcrumbs. Try to do too many things at once here. Panko style breadcrumbs, a little bit of oil. I'm using olive oil today. You don't have to use olive oil. There's some Parmigiana Reggiano cheese and our favorite seasoning, some Seminole Swamp seasoning right there. Just throw all these things inside your Dutch oven when you go uh, to fishing and fish camping or camping and they'll be even fine in there for at least a, at least a couple days. All right, so let's go ahead and get our uh, Dutch oven set up. And you don't have to have a fancy table like this to do this in the wild. You know, we did it right on the beach. It's gonna give us about a nice ring right around the bottom. You know, about the same size as the bottom of the Dutch oven. Grab our number 12. Now we don't need this much volume really to handle uh, the amount of food we're gonna do. Um, we just want that surface area. You know, you need a lot of surface area. Let's go ahead and oil this up and we'll get ready to cook. I'm just going to take my oil and I'm going to give that three or four tablespoons just to coat the bottom real well. Go ahead, go ahead and preheat the oven a little bit. I'm going to use that new uh, Camp Made lid lifter and lid stand there. Put our, put our top on. I'm going to go ahead and load up a nice ring of coals right around that top rim. Uh, wind's blowing like crazy today. I moved uh, our windscreen kind of out of the way so you, it wasn't in so much shade. You can get a better picture of what we're doing. I'm probably going to have to move that back. So you want one solid uh, rim all the way around. Today we're using stubs. One of my favorite uh, charcoals. It doesn't really matter. It's a short cook. Kingsford worked fine. Um, today that's what I got. So that's all right, it's just been a couple minutes there. We're just going to go ahead and uh, just getting it warmed up. Put that over there on the uh, camp maybe stand. I'll show you how all the old timers of my family used to do their fried potatoes. They just start slicing them right into the pan. And here, we're going to slice them. The bigger ones you can cut in half and then slice the halves. Um, but. I remember watching the uh, the old timers in my family, and they used to just slice their potatoes right up over the pot. Here we have some already done, so we're going to go ahead and dump them in there. And hear that little sizzle? That's what we want. All right, now it's time to season them up. So today we're using our, our favorite seasoning Seminole Swamp Season. I'm using the original today because potatoes need quite a bit of of salt and this uh, has quite a bit of salt in it and that's going to be absolutely delicious. So we're just going to season them one time right now and we'll wait till we flip them and we'll season them again. Right now we want to get that lid back on them and get some heat going.
potatoes are uh, really nice and tender now. We just added some more bottom heat to that. You see we just added some coal. So now we're gonna come in with our fish fillets right on top of those potatoes. We're not gonna turn them anymore. These are some beautiful, uh, big crappie. We managed to catch a few nice ones this year. We're gonna try to get all of those on there. They're completely deboned. We're gonna arrange them right over the top of the potatoes. Kind of an even layer. Let's put some seasoning on those and get them to lay flat. They've, they've been frozen. A little more Seminole Swamp seasoning right on top of them. Yep. Alright, let's give her some top heat now for just a couple minutes. Okay, so we brought up some more top heat also. Let's set this over there. We got a nice sizzle going on down in there now. And here's our line again, the other half of our line. We definitely want to get some of that in there over our fish. Okay. Now we're going to take just a little bit of our oil. Drizzle that right over the top of the fish. Try to get it on there as good as you can. You know, it's down there in a pot, so you could use a you know a brush, but here we're this is camping, this is just, uh out on the bank food. It's right on top of our fish fillets. Gonna sprinkle some of that panko. Gonna give a nice texture to it. Hopefully that oil will help it stick to it. And right over top of that, our microplane here. You could grate all this ahead of time. It's a little bit of that Parmigiana Reggiano. And that'll also help our uh, panko crust. Now, this is an easy dish, but it it looks complicated when you're going to see it at the end. It looks like you spent hours doing it, all right? And you didn't. It, it's just this simple, just from those four or five ingredients. All right, let's get the top back on, and we'll uh, let that brown off that panko. So, been about 15 minutes. Go in and take a look. Those look pretty damn good to me. So I'm calling this dish done. So let's get it off the fire and serve it up for you. So now when you're out making shore lunch, you're not gonna have no fancy plates or anything like that. So all we've done was taken that uh, that camp made Dutch oven live lit lifter and stand, and we're gonna serve it up just right on top of the of the Dutch oven lid. Put a little in potatoes on there. Now we don't have no garnish except for the lime that we had left over, the one we squeezed. Put a couple of them on there. Let your buddies dig in. That's gonna be awesome. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's try some of the potatoes first. Man, beautifully brown on the bottom. Mm. That lime really does give them an extra dimension of flavor. Let's try some of the fish there. Nice big crappie. I know that's going to be delicious. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Yep. 
you make this for sure lunch, guaranteed, you're going to be a backwoods gourmet also. You want some? I know you do. Oh, boy. I got me a belly full of that. I ate that whole thing by myself. It was really, really good. The only takeaway I would give you or a tip I would give you here for me, and it's personal preference, maybe I skipped uh, one of those steps in the seasoning process with a Seminole Swamp. That was the original, seems to be the most salty version of their uh, seasoning. So, I mean, it was fine for me, but for Mrs. Backwoods, I guarantee it's going to be a little too salty. That's all right. She ain't home. I eat rest all by myself. Oh. Okay, we're recording. So, if you guys haven't checked out our Amazon store yet, please check out the link in the first comment down below. You can buy a lot of the gear that you see us use here on the Backwoods Gourmet in every episode, including these camp made products that we use today. So, if you check out that link, click on there, you don't see what you want on the Backwoods Gourmet store, use the search bar at the top. You can buy anything on Amazon, and every purchase helps to support what we do here all the time. Thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right over here to see another great Backwoods Gourmet episode. It's going to be right up here. And for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.